Let's say this marriage is like that. That maybe the woman has tried what she feels she can try. Maybe she has concluded that my husband is only happy when he's outside. My husband doesn't talk with me. My husband doesn't know if I am there. I, I don't know whether you, whether you understand where I am going. A marriage that the woman has given up hope, or maybe the man has given up hope on having such relationship, such sweet relationship with one another. How, what can one or both, let me say both may not be ready. What can one party do? Praise, yes, praise the Lord. I also need your I, praise the Lord. There should be more room for the both of them to still let go. I will use this example. Before we came here, we were in Nasarawa State. There is a couple, our neighbor, which they are practical example of the question you just raised. Their marriage is like completely dead. The husband will go out from morning till 12, sometimes 1 in the night before he comes back. Which, when we notice that I, we came close to the family, and when you are talking with your husband, even in front of the wife, the man can just say, what, is it because of this house I built? I can leave this house and go away. Which, by me looking, you know that this man is ready to leave the wife. So, one day I was sitting with her, I was like, why can't you try and still know your husband more? Do more. She was like, she has done everything possible, humanly possible, that she doesn't think her husband can change. In fact, to this extent, she doesn't even care if the marriage breaks. Because she is working, the husband is working. They have three kids. And they have already made up their mind. In fact, the marriage is breaking. But I was like, what are you doing? before that you have stopped doing she was like she's doing everything i said okay don't worry i will still come to you but and i noticed one thing in her she can place her head and leave it for like two three months okay. Okay. she doesn't care okay. okay she can tie wrapper on her chest even when the husband come with visitor in the house she's with wrapper i noticed that in her so one day i was chatting with the husband but we now bring it as a habit he chats with the husband, I chat with the husband, he chats with my wife, so we are now doing it together. In other, what is our aim? How to help and resolve the marriage. So he was like, and she, I was talking with him one day, he was like, she doesn't, she doesn't make up, she doesn't do anything, she keeps her body anyhow, and early in the morning she likes work. I was like, mm -hmm. I said, okay, now I understand. Now I know where the problem is. So one day I called the woman. I was like, why can't you take time on bed with your husband? She was like, no, if she leave the bed, who would help her with her house choice? I said, it's your house. It's nobody's house. Nobody can question you how you keep your house, but give your husband that time on bed. That early hour. That early hour. The man early, loves the early hour. <laughs> Why the woman? She doesn't care. I was like, please try and work on it. So I was like, this your hair is even dirty. I don't, I didn't show her that her husband complained. I said, why not go and do your hair? That day she complained she was not having money. I bring that money and I gave her. I said, go to the salon, apply the lab that restore your hair. So when she came back, she has long hair. She, if you see her hair, very beautiful woman, but I don't feel so happy. We are not sitting outside with them. The husband came back. And I said, Mr. Panja, are you seeing Mary? He not love. He said, hmm. He said, she finds her. He not touch her. I was like, praise God. So I still call her. I said, God, please, still work on this thing. These are the things your husband wants. And you are lacking in that area. So one day we are all sitting together. And I brought a story to them. Because we had a couple to that. They, their marriage was almost broken that they even took the case to court. And the other complained the wife is not giving him sex. He loves sex so much. I was like, give it to him anyhow the way he wants it. She was like, no, she can't. I said, if that's what he wants, woman, if that's what will keep your home, why can't you do it? So when she started, they bring in a flavor in their home. The husband will come, he will put on tie as a school teacher. Why the wife, she will lose her hair, 
use rubber to tie the hair, she will be the student. She will like, uncle, my student, before you know, something will happen. So I was like, and I gave them the story. So, and I said, and I told the woman, your husband can be your uncle. Please bring that ingredient to the home. And to the glory of God, to the glory of God. In fact, God so did it that before we left, in fact, they had happily married. And sometimes when she sees the husband, she will say, oh, cool. oh, oh. the man would laugh. All these legs out here gradually. And before they don't sit down and discuss. But before we leave, the man, they will sit down, discuss, talk. The man will even pack her clothes and wash. He will cook for them to eat. So there's no marriage that doesn't have hope. It's for you to just let go and learn to fit in with what your partner wants. Praise the Lord. The place of prayer. Yes. If you watch this film, Wally, she tried everything she could, but it was not working. Until she went that counselor, who told her how to handle an issue on the name. And when she did that, God came down and rescued her home. If you have tried everything possible, you know how to do best. Have you tried God? Have you asked God, what should I do? What are the things I need to do to make my home work? But he said, she, God gave him the seven keys to be so married. And today, he's enjoying his family. He gets married. He has God for your God. So if you can go on the altar of prayer and ask God, you are the one that knows the other man that I do. Give me the key to my heart. I tell you, only one key. It was said by Mama G. Sorry, Mama, I'm using this word. He said, every man is like a monkey. Once you can locate the right banana and give to the man, say he follows you. That's true. That's true. Locate that banana and give to the man. I tell you, he follows you. One banana of a man is respect. Even a seven year old boy can die for respect. Give that man that respect. I tell you, you become the queen. Please stop. In, in this case, all the work falls back to the woman. All the work on the marriage falls back to I'm the woman. I'm not saying that. Okay. But often the woman has a lot to do. But I would say a wise woman. Yeah, is yeah. a wise man. Mm -hmm. A wise woman. So that's why I say that a wise woman. Build. So you are the builder. In fact, you can make the man the laborer. <laughs> but you are the builder, you employ him and pay him for what he's doing. Amen, somebody. You are the builder. So if you agree with me, even though those things in marriage. You will notice that women enjoy the marriage than husband. Yes, sir. And they suffer in marriage than the husband. That's true. Yeah. That's true. For example, that year is 19 years in marriage. By the time the first child we get married, they will not pick him up for Mungo. Yes, sir. <laughs> when mommy goes for Mungo, maybe in US of A, when after they have taken mommy finish, okay, give this one to your husband. But they were giving enough package for the mother. So she needs to work in order to eat the fruits of her labor. But the other man, it was man, it was first man to partake of the fruit of the labor. So you got to work. When you work, you eat it. Ignore what you are saying now. Don't allow any lady outside to take your outside from you. Rather, get to work. Marriage is a work, not a gift. Get to work. That's why I always say that if you don't work on your marriage, you will walk out of your marriage. Because every marriage needs work. Sir, back to you, still on that question. How do we resurrect David? So that David can know that there is a woman by his side. Thank you very much. I think they said for most of it. But the key word there is prayer. The have instance where the woman may have done all she could to, to spice up the romance in the marriage and yet is failing. In that instance, you are left with an option to stay or to go. But we are talking about Christian marriage here. And so to go is not there at all. So you have to stay. And if you have to stay, what do I do? 
to resuscitate the fire. Now you have tried all you can, and it's not possible. But like I said, you've identified yourself. You now need to do self-evaluation. What are those things actually I'm doing that probably my partner was not right? There are men, but most men hate nagging. The woman that marks, men hate it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm coming. Well, when I say men hate women that marks, we are talking about romance here. Yes. The same thing, women also hate men that marks. That's true. So you need to do self evaluation either as a man or as a woman. What are those things? that my partner does not like what I'm doing. And if you can know to do them, you know it's going to create problems. So what you need to do is identify them and see how you can plan and lead them to suit your partner. Now let us take that you have done everything within your limit to ensure that the marriage works and yet doesn't work. Then you have to fall back to prayer. I want to also tell you another instance. There is a woman Somewhere around Rome or Kuta, what happened? There is Anglican church around there, because of us who are used to that place. Now, this man that they also married, after some time, the romance started dying down. This man was coming back with just like they said here about somebody, you know. And the woman tried everything possible. The man will come back late, he will not eat his food. The woman will beg, she will pray, she fasted, nothing. She tried it in the form of quarreling, it's not done. The man will go out, come back late. He will go do everything he likes and come in. So one day he was tired, she had to go and meet one of the pastors. He said, he said that he called the man, said, I'm tired of this marriage. I don't know what else to do. So the man asked her, what kind of beer does the husband take? He said, it takes star. It's okay, no what? Every day, buy star and keep in the freezer for him. Then early morning, as he's sleeping, just wake up, kneel down, hold his feet, and pray. And the prayer should go this way. God, please, wherever my husband is going to, please take him there safely and bring him back safely. Whoever he is going to meet, he should meet the person safely and come back home safely to meet his family. This woman continued that prayer for close to two weeks. Every morning, early morning at night, she wake up. And then one day, what I'm telling you is a life story. One day, while the man was praying, the man I woke up and heard the wife pray. The man I said within himself, he said, if I can go out, spend this morning outside, do all I'm doing outside. Then the one I left to the house, I abandoned. Is he praying for me to come back? Then something is wrong. So from that day, that was at the heart of that man changed. And the man I came back. Do you know what the man did? The man, what the good is him? God gave the man a contract. A very good contract. And he bought a car and gave to the wife. That is what prayer can do. What I'm saying here is that we can do everything within our limit as human beings. Whether we like it or not, we have our individual differences. Whether we like it or not. Sometimes we may, our behavior may be influenced by environments. Our behavior may be influenced by certain emotions that we go through. But if you discover that, you now need to ask yourself, if it is continuous, how do we address it? That's why I said first that will do self-evaluation. Those things your partner does not need, try as much as possible to avoid them. And of course, you follow them in prayer. There are so many that we cannot list. She has mentioned about the woman. You must always learn to keep your house clean as a woman. Yes. You must keep your house clean, because no man will be happy to see his friends come to the house and the environment is not clean. No man will be happy about it. And if the man notices that the wife is like that, then his behavior is going to change. And so many others. So we must do that set of knowledge. That's the way we can help our marriage. Praise the Lord. When you're adding something, also talk on a woman that is not ready to do anything about the situation. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this couple, they are even most not Christian. The man is most interested in the lady. Very beautiful lady. And she complained to her younger brother that she doesn't know what happened to her these days. The man doesn't have time for her anymore. And they won't look at her. And he said to the husband, please can you permit me to take your wife out? And the man agreed. He took her to a salon to make a nice hair start for the lady. Took her to Gucci, bought some shirts and trousers. Bought good night gown for the lady in question. He said to her, when you get back home, take the shower. Help yourself. Once you have his car on, prepare. And that very beautiful day, when the man came, came with his friends. Usually when he, when he comes around, he will still he didn't see the woman. So this day, when the woman came with his friends to see the room, let us got to work in. And rest of them and serve them water. They look. They look. Am I wrong? Uh, my wife or whoever? He told his friends, please, can you excuse us? I will call you Mr. That was the end of the current in the house. <laughs> Why am I saying this? There was something she was doing during court she, she stopped doing. Now I'm married. I'm married, yeah. And he took the man outside. Mm. You know what the man wants? Some men like the lady that dressed smartly while dressing anyhow. For myself, I ate with the tire part. I ate it partial. My wife or no my wife, I dislike them. I see you as a dirty woman. No time to make your hair. Oh, thank God now for cups. We have cups now. If no time, at least you do one small style. Put that look beautiful. I get to miss that. Second on the issue of women who does not want you know, to bring back what has been happening. It is not under any demonic influence. Okay. A reasonable woman won't appeal yeah. than the man. Because okay. they, they, they are the receiving end. A man can have pain more than a woman. But when a woman is having a challenge, oh my sister lost her job in the back here some years back. Oh, there was issue in her marriage. She was having challenges, calculation. But the man was doing well in his own office. The time he came, he called him and said, Lady, we are best to resign. You are making errors too much because of your having challenge in your body. She had to resign. She couldn't bear the challenge at home. It's not, it's not affecting her business. So, what am I saying? If a lady is having issue in her home and she doesn't want to, to amend, check, she said there's demonic influence, or she, she sees somebody else outside. Because every wise woman will build a home. You will do everything possible to make sure the thing works. Not you now, tend it apart by yourself. Again, one time I was saying about the show of Nagi, Sir, women don't nag. Men, for that notion. Women are talkative. They are like newscaster. How do I mean? They don't give you the breakdown of everything that happened in the day. When you say, oh, I'm tired, before you know, it grow into nothing. Yes. Why? You were not giving that attention. So also men don't nap too. Something lead to one another. If that, that was the proper work done from Asia, there will not be nothing at all. Be That's true. So we need to learn ourselves on this, on this note. Yeah. Women don't nap. Mm. Also, one of the things that we did, women don't like money. That's true. Am I correct, somebody? Correct. Sir, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. 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 Women don't like money. They want attention. That's true. When that one is not there, it's is the money to do the attention. Mm. That's true. If you give your wife attention, she will not care for your money. She wants to. For if there's no attention, they give you money, then. That's right, right. I can't get you, give me the money. Give me money. <laughs> Pay me for the time, you are not giving it to me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> God is not open. <laughs> no, please, let's go back to those in courtship. Because when we started, Pastor here talked about um, a, a man can 
stay with the girl, buy her kids, do this, do that. And yet there is no love. So how will our young ones here truly know the difference between love and lust? So that when they see romance, they should not feel that because this young man is being romantic towards me, that means that he loves me and wants to marry me. How would they be able to differentiate the both? Well, in my little understanding, you can differentiate the both. If there is lust, the man will eat, he will easily and quickly ask for sex. In the process of the romance, he will bring in sex. But if he genuinely loves you, a man that genuinely loves you and he wants to marry you, he will never ask for sex. He will show you he loves you, he will show you the romance, you will see, and he will never ask for sex. But any man that is not genuinely in love, he that's just his target. He wants to have you. What if, the man, what if the man comes from a family that says she must be pregnant before the marriage? What we are talking about here is a Christian woman, am I correct? Yeah. We are talking about so Christian woman and Christian courtship. It is not allowed. No. I believe that in the eastern parts of this country, okay. they believe a lot in, they don't care about whether it's Christian or no Christian woman. Yes. They believe a lot that the, the, the lady just have to get pregnant. And then there are men that have made it, it is a decision they are taking, that I cannot marry, I cannot pay for somebody I have not tested. So even though they are born again, they, or should I say they claim to be born again, they go to church. Is the lady a Tokumot Khan? I would advise the lady should to just cut off the courtship. Now, if you advise the lady to cut off the courtship, the lady now feels you don't want her to get married. Honestly, except if she's a woman that doesn't really know what she wants. If she really knows what she wants, and she knows that this marriage of a team, they are going, is a lifetime. It's an institution that have no end until death do you pass. Then she believes, if she really have the understanding, this one doesn't really love me. Because issue of you wanting me for sex, when we get married, we can do it as many times as we can. Anyway. There are couples that immediately they got married, immediately they got married, they do it every day, every day. And it will get to a point that they can't even do it every day. Sometimes it will go, maybe once in a month. Once, let's say once in a week. Let's say once in a week. So definitely to me, sex in courtship, then you must insist that until you test, my dear, Go away from it. God will bring the man that will openly love you and take you to the altar before you do all the testing. Test at home after marriage. Test, check, and do everything in your home. Let me let me just come here. Sorry. Yes, Praise the Lord. Uh, this, this is a Christian setting. Yes. We understand that in marriage we have cultural diversity. Yeah. But whether our culture says that uh, we must be sure if this woman can, yeah, spatter or not before we marry, or if this man is spatter or not, whatever. As a child of God, we know that the Bible has called remarriage to self. So in courtship, if we see, that's why it's often said that most time courtship begins from dating. Courtship starts from dating. Now, when you want to start dating and graduate to courtship, it is always important to set limits for yourselves, the yeah. two partners. Yeah. If you set limits for yourselves, when you go, when your dating has graduated into courtship, mm. then you will know that the other yeah. person will not want to break it. And of course, one of those limits is that you should not even come to this other side we're talking about. So if we have set that standard for ourselves, then no, none of the partners will want to talk about it. But if you see that it's going towards that side, so like you said, by your own standard as a child of God, you are not expected to fall victim. All you need to do is to put a hold. I believe that if God has arranged that partner for you, that God will make a way for you to still have that partner as a life partner 
even without falling into that uh, uh, loss. Uh, this life is coming your way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me see the normal persons that have a question. I comment to you. Okay. So that's okay. Let me take the last question here before we take questions from the presentation. It is this uh, belief. There is this belief that it is women that are romantic. Men are not romantic. And then most of the time, the man will always want, let it be that it is the woman that comes around, touches, talks. It is the woman that is always wanting time, wanting attention. So men just feel that women are more romantic than the men. Is it true? I want to say yes. In my own view. Yes. In my okay. Own let, let me now come. Okay, let me hear from Sarah also because your answer, your response will make me ask the final question I want to ask. So, sir, what do you think? Is it true? That the women are more romantic? Yes, than the men. The answer is yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I say so. Like I said before, we are made up of different personalities. You see, there are some men that tend to be more romantic than their women. And there are some women that are more romantic than their men. Okay. That's why I say that it is yes and no. Now, it that depends on that particular relationship. Now, if you discover that your rate of romance is higher than that of your partner, you would, what you need to do is to try to build up. I just gave you an instance. I say I have a friend. Each time they come visiting, they want to say, my husband is more romantic. Now, we try to make fun out of it. Each time we call on phone, I say, I hope you're romancing your wife. And it became a slogan. And the other day, when they came to the house, I asked one, as I said, what's that? He said, it's not, it's trying. That's the language you use. It's trying. Now, we also have a situation where some men have also complained about their wives. So, you see, there's a situation there where sometimes you see the men be more romantic than the women. Sometimes you see the women be more romantic than the men. It depends on circumstances. But where it's of course, the partners should learn to build it up. See what you can do to add spice to it, so that your relationship can have a better intimacy, a better romance, and you enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Are you saying that if you find out that your husband is, should I use the word frigid? Does it easily loosen up? No, don't use frigid. I shouldn't use frigid. Okay. But the truth is, there are people that are just like. Hmm? Is, should I use stick? <laughs> yes, I understand. You are, you are trying to talk about some persons. It could be a man, it could be a woman. Yes, it could be. Who, who tend to be very difficult when you try to break them. Yes. Yes. I even see. even in that situation, mm -hmm. even in that situation, you can still create a room. You can still create a room that can wake him him. Whether a man or a woman. I say this because Personally, there are certain things I wasn't doing. And when I got married, my wife asked me to begin to do that. Okay. Even though it was difficult for me to do. Yeah. But because she tried to see how she can spice up the marriage, she made me and started doing it. There are certain things my wife was not doing, which I wanted her to. She wasn't doing it. I made her do it. Okay. You know, mine may not be yours. That's why I said that people begin to unbar the bag of romance. There are so many. The formula I use in my relationship is not your formula. Each and every one of us has our own formula. There's no single formula in marriage. But one thing is that when you identify these things, you try to see how you build them up. It will help you. So if the man is frigid, like you said, even though you don't want to use that term, yes, you can still identify areas that you can 
you know, see how you start up and then you weaken that frigidity in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Questions. Let's take questions. Let's take comments from the floor. Where's the first person? Yeah, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I appreciate God for the servants that he has used to make today a reality and to get me blessed. So I know this good God will continue to increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to ask one question based on the topic we just treated that is tagged the Romans. So please, I want you to throw more light to me. Is romance the same as love? Hallelujah. And please, I want to also know if the word romance is deceptive. I want to count it with this. I have a friend that I know the only time he plays well in his house is when he thinks he has fucked up out there. Hallelujah. And he comes back pretending to the wife, hallelujah, that I am too romantic. When he comes back, that is why I asked that question, romance is deceptive, hallelujah. So when he comes back, he plays around the wife to show that I still love you the way I do, hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. I said here that you cannot divorce romance from love. I said so. In other words, you cannot separate romance from love. But the two things are not actually the same. But they work together, they are interrelated. That's the first question. Now, I said that romance are actions or any activity novelty as it were that can enhance joy enhance affection enhance romance enhance intimacy in a relationship that's why i said that take for example you are a man i can have romance with you you understand that you are not a woman but there are certain things i can do actions i can that will make you happy now so it is between man and woman. But when we talk about love, it goes beyond that. Love goes beyond romance. But you cannot love without romancing. And then you ask if uh, romance is what? Deceptive. Romance is not supposed to be deceptive. It's not supposed to be deceptive. If there is any act of deception from one partner, then it has to do with the personality of that person. But romance as a concept and it has to do with relationship is not supposed to be deceptive. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yeah. Sir, please, sir, please. Uh, I believe there are some men that naturally, or I feel, in my own opinion, I feel there are some men that are not easily broken the way you earlier said. Sorry, sorry, thank you. That there are some men that na are not easily broken the way you used the word earlier on. Maybe because of what their present condition or what they might have, what they are passing through, they might not easily go down the way the wife think I should go down to like show that I am romantic to you. Yeah, yeah. It's true. There are men like that. There are men that maybe they are bodies, they carry their body yes. over them. They, they find it difficult to control their body. Yes. So when they have a problem, the problem easily carries them to the extent that it gets to the bed. Yes. Even when the woman tries to come close, they don't just have that time because they are thinking about their problem. So what you are saying is true. So it may not be deceptive. It's just that the man has problem with control. 
has issues with being able to control his problems. Now, ma, I want to know if the man can still come up maybe the way the woman is expected. Yes, to it's, it's a matter of time. It's, it's a matter of time. Like you said, that one is not deception. Yeah. You know, we just talked about the things that can take away romance in a relationship. We talked about it earlier. In the way I talked about job and children and all that. It's also part of it. Maybe if you have certain problems that is weighing you down. You see, every other thing does not count. You're just thinking of that problem you have. But you say the other partner can help you. Yeah. The other that's why you have a partner. Yeah. The other partner. They say there's a book I read those days when I was in primary school. It said a friend is somebody who makes your problem his problem. So your wife is your friend. So in romance, the other partner is your friend. And so if he has a body, you should learn to share them together. Yeah. And so when you share those bodies together. It will help gradually, gradually to ease that load away from you, and it will come back again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This, which of us have an answer to what we have in our hands? Let's take them very fast. Praise the Lord. I have a question here. Someone said, "What? How will you know? Or is it the right person when you meet the the person at first sight?" And he says he wants to marry you. I just paraphrase the question. Well, to my own understanding, some men doesn't go into friendship. You know, you start from friendship before it leads you to courtship. There are some men that will come to you. They are not for friendship. They want a courtship. Like my husband, when he came to me, we did not. He did come as a boyfriend. When we met. He said, I want to marry you. I said, let's see. That was the response. And it can be the will of God, and it might not be the will of God. Do you understand? It's something when you put in, if it is the will of God, you will know in the courtship, because he comes to you with courtship. He wants to marry you. And if it's not the will of God, in the process, still, you will get to know. So he might be the right person for you. Because in my own case, it happens to me. He didn't come as a boyfriend. He comes as, I want to marry you. And I told him, let's see. And to the glory of God, 10 years now, we are still seeing. You have seen. I'm in. <laughs> so in that case, you can still go in. You can give it, if it is what you want in a man. If it's the kind, he's the right, he's the kind of man you want. Because every woman and every man, there are some qualities you want in a man. But my advice for you, let's say for example, you want 10 quality in a man and you can see vividly five to six out of those qualities you want. Go ahead. 